What's going on everybody? It's Patrick Dink here. So in this video, we're gonna be going over the top five most common sales objections you are likely to get. And you wanna make sure you watch this video until the end because if you don't know how to handle these objections, it's gonna be extremely difficult for you to generate sales, close deals. And so let's go ahead and dive right in. But before we get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe and turn on notifications and let's get into the first objection. First objection we're going to talk about is let me get back to you. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Let me get back to you later. Okay. Okay, Tommy, thanks for letting me know. Now, just curious, you know, as you think about it, and you want to spend some time, obviously, I, I understand that. But what exactly needs to happen before you actually move forward with this deal? Well, I need to take a look at all the features that you guys are offering and uh, see what my other options are. Okay, so I mean, we already talked about a lot of the features already, right? And so would that mean that you're looking at different competitors, different people? Like, what, what is it actually? Yeah, where we might look at some competitors. So far, have you already like spent time there or is it that you still need to have the meetings with them? You're the first one that we approached. Okay, totally understand. Now, you know, just curious, uh, so, so we're on the same page here. Like, when do you think you'll be looking at these competitors? Um, I think we'll do that this Thursday. Okay, I gotcha. So you're going to have a meeting with wherever you want to talk to on Thursday, right? So how about this? How about we set up another meeting on next Tuesday where we kind of recap everything and make sure that we're all on the same page. It's okay if you talk with competitors, totally fine, right? Uh, I just want to make sure you have all the right information so you know that which one is right for you. How's that sound? Okay, sounds good. So what's going on over here? The prospect, Tommy, said that he needs to get back to me. Now, if I was a regular salesperson, I would be like, okay, great. Let me know. And then you never hear from Tommy again, right? So what I did instead is I need to understand what needs to happen before he actually closes the deal. Why does he need to get back to me? Is it that he doesn't have the budget? It's not the right time? Or is it that he's working with a competitor? In this situation, he is working with a competitor. Obviously, I don't want to talk down on his competitor. I just want to give him an opportunity to learn who his competitor is and see what are the differences. But what I did strategically is that next week, I scheduled a time to talk to Tommy again on Tuesday to kind of recap everything that we talked about and really just to answer any questions he has on why, let's say, going with me might be different from working with a competitor. Why you want to do this is because in that situation, you want to be almost like a consultant or someone that's helping someone out. I'm not saying I'm better. I'm just saying like, hey, let me help you make a decision. Really, if you come with the intention to help, you set up the meeting, they'll take the meeting, and then you can actually have a real conversation. If you find that, hey, maybe they want to work with a competitor for a specific reason and they don't want to work with you anymore, totally fine. But that's much better than them completely ghosting you and you know exactly what happened so that the next time that happens, you can adjust your strategy accordingly so it doesn't happen again. Now let's get into the next objection, which is the price is too high. Okay, thanks, Patrick. But after looking at everything, I, th I think your price might be a little bit too high for us. Interesting. Well, I appreciate you telling me that, Tommy. When we're talking about price, you know, from my perspective, the industry averages, I personally, I think it's pretty fair. But just from your perspective, like what price were you looking for uh, to invest in something like this? I would say we're willing to pay around 10K only. 10K only. Okay, so what we're offering is actually 13K. So it's, it's a little bit off. When you're picking out, let's say, what software you want to use or buying anything, do you usually go for the cheapest option? Well, not really. We're looking at how the price justify like all the features and all the benefits it has. Okay, so you don't go for the cheapest, but you really go for, does the thing actually solve your problem? Yes. And so if it actually solved your problem and it's a fair value, then that would be the perfect price for you, right? Yes. So based on everything that we talked about, would we fall under that category or is there something that maybe we're missing some value to make it actually worth it for you? Actually, I like what you guys are doing, but the other options are cheaper for us. Okay, I see. And would you say that the other options that you're looking at do the exact same thing that we do in the exact same way? Well, I think yours is a bit more user-friendly and it's a bit faster too. Okay, user-friendly and faster. Well, you know, you're using the software in order to save time, is that right? Yes. And if a software is, let's say, more user-friendly and it's faster and it saves you more time, there's obviously a price to that. Would you agree with that? Of course. So in this situation, because we're saving you more time and your salespeople are more productive, they can spend more time generating sales. You kind of see why we would charge more, right? Because just to give you some perspective on our end, we're not trying to be the cheapest. We're just trying to be a company that solves the problem the best. And obviously we want to provide as much value as possible. So the way I would actually look at it is how much time are you actually saving compared to using somebody else? And how much is the time worth? If you were to ballpark it, right? Would you say that the time that we save you compared to the other options might be much more in value compared to the price that we're asking for? Well, considering the time that we'll be saving, it's might be actually worth it. All right, that's what I like to hear. The customer said the price was too high, right? And I'm trying to understand why does he believe the price is too high? And maybe I am more expensive than my competitors. 
Now, is there a reason I am more expensive? And in this situation, my product is more user-friendly and I save their customers more time. And so what I did was I said like, how much do you value your time? And is the price I'm charging much lower than the value of your time? In this situation, it was, right? And so by charging $3,000 more, sure, I'm charging more, but you're saving so much more money from using my product compared to everybody else's. And that's how you justify your higher prices. Now, this is a very specific example, but you know, no matter what you're selling, you wanna think about it in the same way. How can you justify your high price and even differentiate yourself from your competitors, right? Because not everybody chooses the cheapest thing all the time. They wanna choose the thing that's gonna work and it's easy and saves them more time. And if that's what you can do, then easy sale. Next objection we're gonna get is, I need to talk it over with my business partner. Thanks, Patrick, but I will have to talk it over with my business partner. Okay, thanks for letting me know, John. Now, just curious, when you talk it over with your business partner, what exactly do you need to talk about? Well, we want to see how much we're willing to spend and, um, you know, when's the right time to buy. And actually, that's actually a pretty interesting thought you brought up. Just curious, you know, if you were to ballpark like a budget, like what would you be willing to spend, like you were saying? We're looking at a 10K maximum. Okay, we definitely fall into your budget. Now, the other thing you mentioned was like timing, right? So, you know, when do you think you can move forward with something like this? Uh, ideally, we want it ASAP. So how about we do this? You want to talk it over your business part, totally cool, right? But do you mind if I make a recommendation? Okay, sure. How about we set up another meeting for tomorrow, me, you, and your business partner, and we'll talk through what exactly this will look like. That way, because you have the budget and you're trying to get this done as soon as possible, you know, let's just not waste any time and, and really just uh, get this going. Like, how does that sound to you? Okay, yeah, let's set up a meeting tomorrow. So what am I doing here? He needed to talk it over with his business partner. I said, why? He said he wants to talk about the budget and wants to talk about the timing. I don't know the budget. I don't know the timing. So I asked the question, what's your budget? 10K, it fits. What's the timing? ASAP? Okay, tomorrow. So instead of having John talk to his business partner without me being there, right? Because John cannot sell my product and service as well as me. So I need to be in the room. Rather than have two people on their own talk about it and there might be some misinformation, how about instead get everybody in the same room where we can all be on the same page and I have that opportunity to listen to their challenges and really sell them so that they can move forward with the deal. Now we're gonna go into the next objection, which is we're already working with somebody else. All right, thanks Patrick, but right now we're working with another company already. Oh, okay, totally hear what you're saying. Now, John, just curious, um, who are you actually working with? Are you curious to know? Oh, we're working with Vector Marketing. Oh, Vector Marketing, yeah, I heard a lot of good things about them. Hey, just curious actually, you know, how long have you been working with them? Uh, six months. Six months now. And, you know, how's the service been so far? It's been spotty, but overall it's good. <laughs> spotty, but good. Okay, that's quite interesting. Uh, if you were to give them a one out of 10 in terms of like how great they are as services and things that they're offering to you, what would that look like? Um, I'd give them a, a seven. What needs to happen for them to be a 10? Well, some of the features that we're looking for, they don't have it and we're looking to expand and I don't think they're, they have the capabilities to meet our needs. Okay, so basically at your current level, they can kind of do the job, but you're trying to expand your business obviously and they just don't have the capacity or maybe skill to actually do it. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. I mean, you're interested in, in expanding, is that right? Yes. You're already working with a competitor, right? I, I totally get that. But yeah, how about this? I mean, are you interested in learning about how we might be able to help you kind of expand your business beyond what Vector Marketing is doing? Is that interesting to you? Yes, yeah, I'd like to know. So basically what I'm doing here is that this person is already working with a competitor, right? And I need to understand, are they happy or not? If they're completely happy and they love this company, well, it's gonna be super difficult for me to replace them, so it's not even worth my time. Now, what I did is I asked them, how's the service going? They said, it's okay. I said, well, one out of 10, like, what would you give it? They gave it a seven, six. So now I say, okay, what would need to happen to make it go to a 10? And then they're gonna tell me all the problems they have with that company. And I position myself as the person who does not have that problems and can offer a better service. And so now this person who at the beginning of the conversation said, oh, I already work with a competitor. Now they're saying, oh, maybe Patrick can actually help me achieve my business goals. Now, the next objection we're going to cover has to do a lot with timing, and that is we're not ready to buy right now. Okay, thanks, Patrick, but I don't think now's the right time for us to buy. Interesting. You know, is this something that you actually want to do in the future? Maybe not right now, but sometime down the line? Yeah, of course, it's something we want to do in the future. Like want to do, kind of need, or, you know, what is it? It's in our plans. In our plans. Okay, so like for sure it's going to happen, right? Yeah. Okay, well, when do you want to actually do this, or when is it possible? I think six months from now. Okay, so you want to do it, 
but maybe six months from now. Is that because like you, you don't have the budget right now or like what is it like? Well, yeah, we don't have the budget yet and uh, we're going under a uh, restructuring process in our company right now. Gotcha. So there's a lot going on, I'm sure, right? Yep. Okay. So I totally hear what you're saying. How about we set up another meeting six months from now? And then we kind of revisit the conversation to see if it's the right time to work together. How's that sound to you? Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Okay, so I'll do this. How about I'll go ahead and give you a call back. I'll put it on my calendar. I'll send you something uh, for six months from now. How's March 18th sound? Okay, March 18th then. Around that time, right? I'll just give you a call. Then we'll see if it makes sense to work together. Sound good to you? Okay, sounds good. All right, great. So what I did there was that the person is not ready to buy. I need to know when they are going to be ready or if they even want to do this. And I confirm that they want to do it, it's just not the right time. So what I do instead is I schedule another meeting for a future time when I can have another conversation to pick things up, right? And the reason why you want to have that firm future date set is because when you call them during that time, it's not a cold call, it's on their calendar. So you can say, hey, it's Patrick from Whatever Marketing. We talked six months ago, I was curious to know like if you're ready to do X, Y, Z. So they'll be like, oh, Patrick, I remember you. And then you can have a real conversation. That's very different from cold calling someone out of the blue and be like, is this a cold call? You always wanna make it warm once you get them on the line on the first go and then set up the next meeting. So with that said, those are gonna be some of the top common objections that you're gonna get as a salesperson. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you want to start and accelerate your sales career, make sure to check out my website, Sales Legacy, where you're gonna learn everything you need to know about sales. Plus, there's a free training that you can sign up for there. And if you wanna learn more about sales, check out my other video on my top three sales techniques to close more deals. With that said, my name's Patrick Dang, and I'll see you guys in the next one.